Hello and welcome to Life Under Lockdown. Today we're in Perth. Uh, well, I'm not in Perth. I'm visiting via the internet Father Peter Morris, a redemptorist priest in the monastery at Canoole, or St Mary's Monastery in Canoole. So welcome, Father. Hello. Uh, thank you very much for having me on your show. It's great. It's great no, to absolutely, chat to you. Absolutely. I mean, you know, one of the things which I find really, really interesting about yourself and your story is that um, you have had a very interesting journey to priesthood. You've had, you're not a conventional priest, if you don't mind me saying that, you know, in the sense that you're... All right. <laughs> you, may, uh, you were a punk rocker or whatever it was, uh, you know, in a, in a past life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy, yes. I, I think uh, I, I'm, a, I'm mainly a parish missioner, so so my, my, my role is not necessarily to be in, in, in one parish like, like your usual parish priests, for instance. We do have parish priests in our congregation. Um, but uh, I, I travel around uh, and and preach the word of God uh, in various places uh, at various times. I'm invited there by, by by priests and by the teams around them to, to preach the word of God during parish missions. And they're wonderful times. They're, they're times of renewal, uh, times of, of great encouragement, and uh, times for people to come back to their faith. And I, I absolutely love that that part of our our charism, uh, redemptive charism. Um, but yeah, when I'm on parish missions, I, I, I often introduce those those little tidbits about myself to uh, just to kind of say to people, look, I'm a human being like yourself, uh, and a lot of people relate with the stories that 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 we that we tell, especially if they're they're from our our personal background. Yeah, I grew up, um, uh, I got into heavy metal and rock and punk music in my late teens and when I was at university particularly I used to love going to uh, an, an evening called rock karaoke in Aberdeen uh, and uh, used to <laughs> one of my one of my uh, sort of party pieces was singing in the darkness because uh, I could get the, up to the high notes I could get the falsetto and people would find that very entertaining uh, and I, I love that I love that I actually believe it or not was in a Foo Fighters tribute band um, but it never got off the, the ground. But uh, we, we we had some fun together. Uh, we had some fun um, back then. My hair wasn't like Dave Grohl. I tried to grow it, but I just couldn't get there at all. But <laughs> even even at that stage in my life, my hair was receding. From the big thing. <laughs> well, it's funny. The way that, what what is good about your story is that you also have this kind of you know positive outlook to some things. Well, that comes across to me. Um, but certainly you're your experience of lockdown hasn't really been positive in some ways, you know, and I'm very conscious that I've been through that process of going through a difficult start to lockdown and then coming through that towards a good Easter and, and feeling calm and contented. And a lot of people who are contacting me online, are maybe feeling a bit inadequate and they're maybe feeling that they are not having a good time, but maybe that they should oh. be having a good time. So what, what's your thoughts? Father? Oh, mercy. Oh, no, I, I think uh, for a lot of us who are working to try and get the message out there, positive message of hope often. It's because I think that for a lot of people, this time has been a real struggle. Uh, and uh, and I don't think, uh, and I think, you know, I've seen some things on, on Facebook, for instance, that have really put it very well. And they've said, it's okay for there to be really bad days during this time. And I think that's a, an important message to take. For me, uh, I uh, I broke my leg back in February, and <laughs> in fact, it was a, a, a heavy metal gig. Uh, I, and and you know, once upon a time, I used to go into what was called mosh pits. Which, uh, for those who have no idea what a mosh pit is, it's really just a, when at certain points in the music people start kind of jumping about and, and kind of pushing each other. Now, it sounds very violent and, you know, it kind of is slightly dangerous. Uh, but usually they, they would, they would, there would be this melee of bodies and I used to love going into them. They were great fun. And never once did I, did I have an injury when I went into there. You'd come up away with some bruises or something like that. But you know, people, what people don't realise is that it might look terrible, but if, if anyone were to fall over, you people would pick each other up and stuff like that um, but uh, so never a time did I ever go into a mosh pit and come out with a broken leg this time however 
uh, it was collateral damage, unfortunately. I was just happened to be near one, and uh, I, I really started getting into the music. It was this power metal band. They were singing operatically, and I was really getting into it. I started jumping about a wee bit, and sure enough, um, absolute numpty, slipped on some spilt drink on the floor, and just at that time, this guy comes careering out of the mosh pit and stomps on my foot. It went the opposite direction it should have been in. So, um, cut a long story short, I was in hospital that night with a dislocated ankle, a bone, um, and a shattered, very complex uh, um, uh, fracture of two of the bones uh, either side of the ankle. Um, I was in that hospital for a month, a whole month, uh, which was, uh, it had its difficult moments indeed. Uh, uh, operations that I needed were getting delayed uh, for, for various different reasons, for other priorities being made. Uh, the, again, the NHS um, back then in February were kind of just about managing, <laughs> like all the time. Uh, and uh, so, yes, by the time I came out of the, the, the hospital, finally things had been kind of fixed as such. I, was, I had a big plaster cast on and I was, I was, in, I was encouraged to uh, go and have some respite up in, up in Perth because we've got some disabled access rooms and, uh, and, and we've got a lift in our house, whereas our, our house in Clapham has no lift or, or such things. And I was dragging myself up and down these these stone stairs, with, you know, a, a place with high ceilings and whatever else. You can imagine there's numbers of flights of stairs to go up. <laughs> um, so I was killing myself doing that. So th there we go. I was I was, you know, whisked off to to Perth to uh, to, to have respite. And then, sure enough, a few days later, lockdown began, and uh, that, it was. It felt like I had a lucky escape in some ways. <laughs> but, uh, I, I suppose the it, it's so. Anyway, during lockdown, I would uh, all of the, the the things that we had we had planned for for instance missions that I was um, signed up to to be to be helping out with preaching, and um, we had some novena novenas um, in the pipeline as well. All that just just had to be cancelled and um so i wasn't going to be doing anything anyway <laughs> so so uh, on on that side of things it feels like well there you go just just the right time to be to, to be healing from a broken broken leg i was really quite jealous because i thought you know canoe was one of the most peaceful places i've ever been in you know and oh <laughs> i mean the sun shines and you get those, those um well, maybe you can't walk i don't know but there's a woodland kind of walk area big space um, mm -hmm. and barnyard chickens and roosters. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, I, I mean, it, it is it is a, a wonderful place to be in this time, and uh, I just feel so blessed to to, to have this ex experience again. Um, because I, I like I said, I, I'm I'm usually based in in Clapham in London, but uh, at the moment, but I was I was here before. Uh, but you know, needless to say, the the. It's going to be a long journey with the leg healing, but the the emotional side of things, um, uh, of course, uh, also uh, has has its place, and and that's been a struggle for me. Uh, I have to say that's been a struggle, uh, um, but luckily, again, I have some understanding people around me uh, here in the house, and also I have uh, some some good friends who I can share with and uh, and, and and talk. Uh, through through what I've been through, really. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I think, uh, I think as a church, I think um, certainly we're, we're kind of developing our understanding of of mental health issues. Certainly, um, people maybe have the perception sometimes, maybe not so much now, but maybe the perception was there that anxiety and depression were somehow in, in opposition to pure faith. Absolutely. So, yeah. So it's refreshing to see a priest, you know, like yourself, who who has had problems, you know, with. And struggles with with depression and things like that, mental health issues. Be mm -hmm. so honest about it, and that gives people who are not even priests, or you know, maybe they might give your fellow priests some hope as well. You know. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, it was in fact I think sometime just before 
I uh, saw you last, which was uh, was when we were up in in Elgin. Um, the 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 relics of Saint Therese of Lisieux were, were were going around Scotland, and thankfully I was preaching a parish mission in Elgin uh, just that week when when the the relics came to to Buskerton. So uh, I, I came on a on an afternoon when I was I had a bit of free time myself and my confrere from Ireland who was doing his. He was preaching his first parish mission in Scotland there uh, in, in Elgin. And uh, so he came along and we, 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 we zoomed in. We kind of got out of the car. We, we came into the chapel, we saw our, our, our chance. I saw you and I remember saying, oh, would you mind uh, taking a photo? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's, I think that's still now my, uh, that's still my picture on Facebook. Uh, the, 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 the relics. It was a beautiful moment. Mm. Um, but it was before that. I think uh, I was preaching in, in our parish in Clapham uh, one Sunday, uh, and I shared with the congregation uh, something from from my past, where I had an, a very dark experience, uh, a dark time, uh, and I did. I used the word. I said I, 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 I wasn't officially diagnosed, but I I I would have thought that I would have went through a, a period of depression. I, I got help eventually, thank God. And uh, um, I never went I went never went down the medical road though or at that moment. Uh, but I remember the response of the people after uh, that mass actually, uh, the outpouring of of, um, of of just just love and emotion uh, that, that that people gave me as they, they came out of Mass and the amount of thanks that I got, sincere thanks from people to, to, that I shared that. Uh, it, it was quite overwhelming, if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know where you're coming from, because I, when I shared that anxiety history story there at the start of lockdown, I, I had a lot of um, people reaching out, and I'm still encouraging them to, to do so. I think it's good that people do talk about it, and I think it's really important that yourself, Father, you are, you know, you're... you're visually a religious you're a, a priest i think it's good yeah. to see that kind of vulnerability sometimes you know well yeah it's 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 not always easy to share it especially when you're going through it at the time um and uh, in spite i mean it, no i don't think anybody wants uh, uh really wants a priest to kind of start breaking down in the pulpit <laughs> in front of them uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> and so sometimes it, it, it's it's better maybe to kind of share these kind of things maybe after the event. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I mean, like I, I I've just recently actually had had um, an experience of of, of depression uh, clinically. Um, now that it was it was diagnosed, and I um, started going on medication. Uh, I'm still on it now um it, it initially it, it started off really by me going to the doctors and saying look i'm not sleeping mm. and uh and and also this is how i'm feeling and whatever else and they they basically diagnosed it and i think you know there's so many people out there still haven't got quite their a, a grasp of what depression is and isn't i mean it's quite a, a complex um issue uh, it's uh, it, some people, when when you, they hear the word, they, they they automatically think, well, you, you're 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 thinking about ending your life. Um, but it's not always it's not always that at all. Uh, it can sometimes just be manifesting in terms of um, just losing your your sense of, of of interest in the things that you normally find interest in. You know, I, I I was trying to read things, for instance. I love reading sort of fantasy novels and whatever else and uh and, and comedy or whatever and, and and i just couldn't i couldn't i was reading the same page over and over again and just couldn't quite get mm. it, let it sink in uh and it was frust really frustrating me and i was i was watching things that i would you know even comedy and i wasn't laughing and I, and i thought what's going on here and I had to. I had to. I shared with people, and I was living with, and they said, "Look, you know, I think you might need to to, to ask for some help. Go to the doctor. Mm. Uh, it might just give you that that little bit extra kind of boost to help you feel get towards being feeling normal again." Exactly. Um, exactly. I, I echo that sentiment, you know, because see, 
I was always very reticent about getting um, medication for, for anxiety, and I've actually carried this far too long, if you think about it, since I was maybe about 12, maybe even more than that. Um, mm. I just think, you know, you got to look at it in a kind of clinical way. I've got asthma as well, so... Oh. When and this is a big revelation day. <laughs> I've got asthma, but I don't think negatively about my lungs. My lungs have a condition which needs medication daily to make them normal, to make myself breathe normally. If I didn't take that medication, I wouldn't struggle to breathe. So when it comes to your brain, why are we not thinking the same way? The brain's an organ like anything else. So whatever reason, yeah, yeah. I have a chemical imbalance in my brain which causes anxiety more than most. Um, whether that's through my own you know, thinking growing up or whether it's a chemical thing, I don't know. But what I do know is that, that those drugs have helped. And, you know, yeah. got, I take them every single day now and I don't feel um, drugged. I don't feel like I'm uh, robotic or synthetic mood or anything. I just feel like normal and I feel clear in the, mi- the mind to think yeah. properly. I don't know if that's how you mm-hmm. feel with your, with your medication experience. It's, it's certainly, I think, it's, you know, the, the, it certainly helps to, uh, it, it has helped to, to kind of stabilize myself so that I can process the things that I need to process mm. uh, I, I, in, a, in a way that's healthy and in a way that doesn't, uh, doesn't destroy me. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I do see it as a temporary thing. I do see it as a thing that I want to, um, to to leave aside one day as well, um, which could happen. Well, I have to say, you don't have to be. It doesn't have to be a long term thing. Some people do need it long term, but some people don't. So yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, I, I think uh, what was I trying? To, I'm, I'm losing my thoughts track here. <laughs> um, I, I'm just. I remember when when I when I first went on it, it was almost like. I was admitting defeat, as it were. I was feeling like a failure, um, and and it's it's taken me some time to really uh, just recognise how how bad that is. Uh, to to the fact that we need help, uh, and the fact that that um, the the courage it takes sometimes for us to actually ask for it. Uh, uh, can, they, they can be moments of, of utter grace when, mm. when, when really God steps in. Uh, uh, God, I mean, for me, uh, one of the most beautiful moments reflecting on the passion, the crucifixion mm. of, of our Lord is the, the fact that Jesus took on vulnerability. Mm. He became vulnerable for us. Uh, and he showed that um, vulnerability can be a way towards liberation, towards freedom, towards resurrection. Uh, it's a gate, It's one of those gateways that we can walk through. Um, and and of course, the message of the Paschal Mystery is that uh, even though it can be a horrific time, uh, and, and and even in this lockdown as well, going through it, it's hell. Going through it, it's our moment of, of in some ways, sharing in that, that moment of Holy Saturday when, when Christ went into the depths, uh, beyond death. He went into the depths. And I don't think that that was 100% a, a triumphal march. It, it, it was also a sharing in the, 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 whole, the, the darkness of the human experience that, that is a part of the human experience. It's not the whole human experience, but it's certainly a part of it. Uh, but he, of course, came out the other end uh, triumphant, and and we we will too, and we can too. We will come out of this time. Uh, it will pass. Uh, but it, that's not to say that we have to pretend that everything's wonderful right now. Um, there are some there are some blessings out there, uh, and and there's some really good things out. There. I mean, we need to hear these messages of hope. But some, you know, it's that that's not to say that we have to pretend that. Um, I'm not suffering. And no, there have been some times which have been difficult uh, for me personally. I know there have been difficulties for others out there as well. So I just want to shout out to them. You know, you're not alone. (laughs) Yeah, that's wonderful. That's a really, really, really good message, Father. I think that is really important. I think think a lot of us do put a face on um, 
you know, to try and make the most of things. Certainly, um, yeah. you mentioned grace. I certainly felt that since Easter, and I will say this again, I think since Easter, I've felt a real grace of strength, of, of courage, um, of just contentment, of accepting the situation that we're in. And that has brought great peace. I think one of the things which, which I don't know if it's a case for your depression, but for my anxiety, one of the things that really drives it was trying to be in control all the time of your, of your own situation. So I don't like mm-hmm. flying. I really don't like flying. I'm terrified of flying. Wow. Um, sorry? Wow. I just said wow. Yeah. I, I, yeah. What are you saying? What are you saying? Why? Not why. Not why at all. <laughs> not at all. No, uh, I, don't like I mean, I do. I, that, I, I, a metal can flying 30,000 feet in the air. <laughs> I think you know. Look, you know. Again, I've got I've got a good friend. I'll 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 keep him nameless. Who I remember sitting next to him in the plane, uh, and he would always get out his rosary beads and grip them oh, that's tightly. Me. That's me. As, as we the rosary beads here. I've got a whiskey here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but the thing is, uh, you know, that, that, that goes back to that kind of drive to be in control. I was driving the plane, I was thinking this plane came on, I was flying the plane mentally, and it came at that point in time where I was going through this coronavirus crisis. I was seeing it coming from China, and I was seeing it coming from Italy, and no one here was doing a thing. The government wasn't yeah. doing anything. I was barking at my parents and stuff, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, and they were getting really frustrated because they weren't understanding the gravity. And I was just trying to control yeah. it, but now. This has happened, this is over, you know, we're in lockdown and I think I've now become more accepting of things that you can't control and, and realising that God is ultimately in control of our own destinies and what's what's going to happen with us and ultimately our future's secure if we do the right things in life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, powerlessness, that's, 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 that's another big one, uh, again, that Christ took on. He took on powerlessness on in his passion too. So uh, uh, you, you've got you've got you've got him suffering in you in, 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 in those moments of powerlessness as well. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> rosary as well has been transformative. We we started to do um, a family rosary um, during during the course of lockdown every night, and I think it's really really helped. Um, not just you know living with your parents, you know, because sometimes that can be a bit frictious. I'll be honest, but, but um, just the, in terms of you know the solidarity and prayer with everyone else, and, and not in your household, but even beyond that, so I think that's really been. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I must say, it, like uh, during this time of, of of lockdown, the the whole sense of of prayer together uh, has has um, become so important to to me because obviously you're not you're not uh, well it's different for us in, in community we, we do continue to 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 pray uh, together the, the divine office uh, and, and and we have mass each day in our houses I mean that's another thing you know <laughs> the, the privilege that we have to continue to, to to celebrate mass and and to receive communion here and I, I, I kind of sit I'm 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 sitting there during during mass and thinking, you know, most most of the Catholics out there don't have this right now, and uh, and I and in some ways I kind of feel guilty. <laughs> I don't know why, um, but uh, there's been a few times during lockdown, not not more than a few times actually, that where I've, I've prayed mass in my 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 room here. Uh, I, a couple of days in, into my time here, I set up. An altar. Uh, I was hobbling around the house trying to find all these different things uh, <laughs> throughout Canoel, and I put together a, a, an altar uh, to to pray mass, especially if I couldn't make it to our um, um, scheduled time in community. But it, it, something just seemed to take off where where I was able to to pray mass with with groups uh, over Zoom, and uh, and so that helped me. It helped others out there. Uh, because in some ways praying mass on your own uh, without a congregation is is um, can be a very prayerful moment, but it's also uh, something uh, I, I do miss a congregation with you, praying with you, uh, responding to the the words you're saying, I'm saying. Um, uh, so yes, I do I do miss that that communal aspect of of, of Eucharist, uh, which. Um, which has been the case, but it's also been 
supplemented over Zoom. But again, that is a uh, it, it's lovely, um, but it's nothing like the real thing, as it were. If you know what I mean. <laughs> no, <worries. laughs> no, it's, it's great. It's th- thanks for sharing these thoughts um, today, Father. Obviously. And um, there's so many people who, who watch these, and I think a lot of people will be comforted and uplifted by your by your honesty and your and your you know your caring kind of take on on what it is to have mental health issues and also be religious. So I hope you take care. I hope your recovery is swift, and I hope this virus is you know swiftly dissipated as well for us all. Thank you very much. I mean, in spite of in spite of the the, the, the pain and whatever else the joy still there um it's it's deeper than than uh, than than the tears that come out of the eyes now and again so uh, um just there you are please please uh, i hope this this brings hope into some households today uh, and thank you for for asking me i was absolutely astounded uh, that you asked me so <laughs> well thanks for accepting some people don't accept <laughs> oh mercy yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh well then <laughs> uh, no, 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 it's been good so thanks for and, and god bless you and, and take care you're very welcome john paul t- uh, sorry john patrick john patrick <laughs> why is that <there> coming <laughs> right for the people who are watching this right i've changed my facebook name i've removed the joy the jip just so it's so clear for everyone now that my name is john patrick my mother and john father had, had a bit more imagination and called me after the pope at the time of my birth <laughs> Sorry. In case you edit that out, thanks very much, John Patrick. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I got a bit lazy during lockdown, not editing anything. <laughs> oh, well, there you are. Oh, goodness. Don't you love it when that happens on comedy oh, shows? Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> um, God bless, Father. Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheers. Bye. Bye.